In my mind, there's two types of people. There's Normie Mo and there's Privacy Joe, or maybe the female version, Normie May and Privacy K. Obviously, most people are Normie Mo's and Normie Mays. One thing I can tell you about tech normies is that not only are they oblivious to what they do to their own privacy, but their choices often damage other people's privacy. So it goes beyond even a personal choice. Let's find out what your tech normie score is. If you have a low score, then you're salvageable. You have a good chance of being a privacy Joe or privacy K. If you have a high score, then you've been fooled by big tech and society, and you're living a lie and it's time to examine your habits and behavior. Stay right there. I'm on the platform odyssey.com and I'm now one of the top creators on there. In case I get the platform, please follow me there using the link in the description. And also join my app Braxme, which is a privacy focused social media. My company offers protective tools like a VPN, Brax Mail, and now we have officially begun shipping the Brax2 privacy phone, which is a phone that does not reveal your identity. If you're interested in keeping your identity and information private, these products are on my app, Brax Me. The link is in the description. Let's find out what your tech normie score is. If you fall into the category, then you add one to your score. A tech normie has a score of 10. A perfect score to qualify as a privacy Joe or privacy K is zero. Now a privacy Joe uses alternative technologies, which is not in this video, but getting a score of zero means you are conscious of what you do and you're ready to take the next step. Let's get started. Number one, you buy the latest Google, Android, and iPhone. You're completely enthralled by whatever new technology is offered. You're completely unaware or perhaps do not care that your phone knows your every move or your every thought. You don't even know that the phone tracks you even when the power is off. I know your usual response to this is, I have nothing to hide. Neither do you have any conception that what you see when you search Google is what they want you to see based on what is known about your beliefs and behavior. You probably did not know that a huge database exists about you with various big tech companies and the government so your entire life history of email and texting is at the fingertips of third parties. You do not search for alternative communication methods because all you see is the convenience and do not see the effects on society, politics, and people's behavior. You do not perceive that big tech can control the flow of information and kind of information on a mobile smartphone that they sell you. 24-7 tracking may seem spooky to you, but you do not notice any effect on your life. So if you have any doubts, you are certain to set it aside. Now you notice that the phone seems to know what you're thinking when you suddenly see ads that relate to something you just did. But you think this is limited to ads. So again, you push it aside as not important. You do not sense that the information you see on your mobile device is curated, censored, and unbalanced. But maybe you've already been convinced of the correctness of the issues from long-time phone use since your youth. So everything is cool and you just need to focus on fun on Instagram and TikTok. Number two, you are a big Siri Google Voice Assistant user. You are completely unaware or unconcerned that everything you say to your phone is sent to Apple or Google and stored for some unknown length of time. Many of you will even dictate what you post on social media so that you guarantee that a third party has transcriptions of your every thought. Maybe you've heard that Google will record your data so they can profile you and put you in a cohort of people with the same beliefs. This does not bother you. Now you believe also that Apple cares about your privacy so you do not concern yourself with the iPhone even though it acts as your priest knowing everything you do and then the actual priest is a government that views that data. You have no conception that big tech profiles you to know what you believe and this is a big source of that information. You're not even concerned that some of your friends are talking in the background and could be recorded by Siri and Google Assistant as well. Could your choices affect others? You probably say, 
Who cares? Hey, it's hands-free convenience. Now, if you're disabled and you have to use voice, then you get a credit on this one. So don't take a point. Number three, you have ring cameras. You think you're helping your own security with a ring camera. Hey, it's a nice simple gadget and wireless so you don't have to spend so much energy installing it. You of course had no idea that all your surveillance videos are stored on Amazon for use by intelligence agencies and law enforcement. You had no idea because you just bought this thing and installed it without considering how the data is stored. Neither have you been reading the press where Amazon acknowledges that this data is being shared. I'm sure you also have no idea that this comes with facial recognition technology also powered by Amazon and used by the government. But the worst part is that you're not just spying on yourself with your movements in and out of your house. You're also spying on your neighbors or anyone jogging or walking nearby. In other words, you willingly support and participate in the surveillance network which of course you happily paid for. But why limit your location tracking with your phone? It's always best to get confirmation of who you're with with facial recognition, especially of your guests. Number four, you have Amazon Alexa Echo. It's bad enough that you actually allow someone to listen into your private conversations at home. You even believe that someone is really protecting you by keeping this private. You actually believe Amazon's claims. Or maybe you don't really care about that. It's just more convenient to vocalize your thoughts to Google search and Amazon to make sure other entities know what you're thinking. This is great because you don't mind sharing your information with third party mercenary firms that use your thoughts to profile you. Like for the companies Palantir and Jigsaw, for example. That's excellent database information so someone can easily find who's thinking what and can isolate a household. You probably didn't know they have a belief map so big tech can isolate which neighborhoods, including specific individuals, have a particular belief, for example, like anti-vax people. Of course, this does not apply to you since you're vaxxed. However, it doesn't bother you that people are being identified and ostracized for their choices. Meaning, it's not really a free country. But it seems free. Uh, oh well. Of course, you're already supplying some of this data with your Google searches. But what the heck, it's great to give the man more information about you. Maybe you think it will improve your social credit score. But the worst part is that you do not concern yourself with others. Others who visit your home and talk to you and you did not warn them that you have Amazon Echo and so they are now also profiled though they did not have their own Echo at their own house. This is great. You love sharing the surveillance because you don't want to be the only one that's tracked. I'm sure you've never heard of the voice print where if there's a source of your voice and stored by a government contractor like an Amazon, that your voice will be recognized on any phone system even if you use a different phone or some secret SIM card. But it's so cool to be able to change music by voice, isn't it? You're too lazy to even click on Spotify on your phone. Number five, you do not question the use of Google Docs or Grammarly. You create documents and some may be important and private documents, perhaps about financial issues or even personal ones like your love letters or even lawsuits, or they could be very sensitive business letters. Maybe there are discussions of your personal life in your college philosophy class. And you decide that you're going to store this in Google Docs. Or you really want to check your grammar as well. So you're going to use Grammarly. Again, you have no realization that you're sharing something with a third party. Especially a Google that deliberately watches what you think. Maybe you forgot that Google will read your documents to watch for context and keywords. Maybe you think they're only using it to search for content they can use for ads but you really don't have any appreciation for the fact that they actually track your political beliefs and make sure to change your search results to try to change your views. And you didn't think that if you're an intelligence agency having people write great detail about themselves and stored in a central database, a source such as Grammarly and Google Docs, is fantastic. Not just some words captured from other sources like Siri, full long explanations of your thoughts 
great stuff for them to combine with their collection of your lifetime's worth of emails, texts, and phone records. Well, you likely didn't know that because you're a normie. Number six, you don't know what an IP address is. Likely you don't know how the internet works. Maybe you do, but don't care. Either way, you're unconcerned about that identifier that is associated with all your devices at your household. Every access to the internet is tracked, recorded, by a likely semi-permanent identifier called the IP address. It is associated with your cable modem from your DSL provider. But you don't know anything about that since the cable company just installs it and you don't really care as long as you have internet. Of course, not only does your internet activity use a fixed identity, you're unconcerned that some entity can ask your cable company who you are since they know exactly who's using their modem. Maybe your kids download music illegally using some tools like BitTorrent, and you're waiting for the day when you get a $50,000 lawsuit about the illegal download, all because you weren't aware that everything you do on the internet with your DSL modem is completely identifiable. But it hasn't happened yet, so you're unconcerned for now. You likely have no realization that absent any protective action, every website you visit or app you use, like Google, knows this IP address so they can always pinpoint you. And using advanced technology, they can actually even pinpoint your location to within a few feet just from this IP address. Perhaps you're more advanced than the average normie. You may have heard of IP address location tracking in the past, but you've heard that it's not that accurate, like it tracks you only to the city level. This is because you have no understanding of the advances in technology that refines this location from the IP address. You may not have heard of the reverse IP lookup database, where third parties actually collect location information from apps and together with your IP address. And this is then sold to location database companies. I'm sure this is not known to a normie. Number seven, your location on your internet devices is always on. You don't really pay attention to the location settings. It doesn't bother you that your location is tracked 24-7. In fact, on your standard Google, Android, and iPhone, your location is tracked even if you turn location off in privacy settings. But you're not going to accept that since Google and Apple promised to take care of you. You probably even realize that your phone tracks everything when your phone reports to you that you are 10 minutes from your destination, even if you didn't give it a destination. But you think you're pretty boring, so this does not apply to you. Once again, you have nothing to hide. Hmm, that's repeated often by a normie, so that's confirmation. You have no conception, of course, that you can be profiled by location. Third parties know your financial status based on where you live, your job based on where you go every day, your medical condition based on which doctor you see, your political beliefs based on your interactions with others and who is near you, your religious beliefs based on which church you go to, your community based on nearby contacts with the same locations. Your participation in a demonstration or protest because you can be geofenced. Perhaps you don't really care that someone knows so much about you. And location is just one more piece to add. Number eight, you're on Facebook. I don't know what can be worse than being a tech normie on Facebook. Facebook is about as normie as you can get. You use Facebook because you think there is no other way to talk to your family. I'm going to guess that you think Facebook is the greatest place to put your entire family albums forever. You likely have thousands of photos on there. You probably add photos from every gathering or entertainment activity. Maybe you think you'll be famous by being on social media and make money like the Kardashians. That's actually pretty normie thinking. But there has to be no realization that your identity is crowd verified and extremely accurate since everyone from your high school classmates to every possible relative is associated with you. You may even have thought about it later on and changed your name on Facebook, even though technically they don't allow this. But don't worry, they connect old names to new names and it's searchable on Google and every person you've ever associated with is recorded. 
Now, on top of this extremely fine record of your identity, you're also likely very open to saying what you think on Facebook. And even if you don't speak out, your collection of likes tells Zuck clearly what you believe in. Maybe you're being extremely political on Facebook thinking you can convince someone on there to change their mind. But again, you have no idea that your ideas have been permanently attached to you and can be accessed even externally by future employers and parties that want to put you down. You have no idea as well that doxers and hackers will use Facebook to get their information about you. You actually believe the lie that Facebook safeguards your data and only your friends can see your content. You are completely unaware that there are techniques that can be used to acquire data about anyone if all the supposed privacy settings are enabled. Worse yet, you don't even appreciate that what you see in Facebook is censored heavily. So you likely rely on it for news and you have no idea that slowly you're being converted to the ideas that Zuck wants to promote in you. You're okay with being Zuck's political instrument. You also have no understanding of the permanence of what you put on social media. Likely you put in personal details for your friends to see, including personal tragedies or even romantic details because hey, all relationships are permanent, right? Especially when you're young. Will that information age well? You likely don't think about such details since your other normie friends don't think about it either. Oh, you likely forgot too that all your photos are chock full of information. Aside from the Facebook capability to facially recognize every person and keep locations of each photo, they recognize the context of each photo to add to their understanding of you. But maybe you think you don't get this point added to your normie score because you hardly use Facebook anymore. You've switched your social media fund to Instagram and use WhatsApp. Nope. If you use Instagram and WhatsApp, you're using Facebook. So you still get a normie point for that. Number nine, you upload your contact list to social media. You really have no understanding of the dangers of uploading a contact list. This is probably the first time you've even heard about this being an issue. Maybe the first time you've uploaded a contact list was to a platform like Facebook and then LinkedIn. I'm sure Google Mail and Apple follow that very quickly. But it doesn't hurt you much, you think, so you don't really care. What you didn't know was that your act of uploading a contact list hurt others. It hurts everyone that is on your contact list. You basically shared multiple phone numbers, addresses, even birth dates to big tech. So now big tech doesn't even need any special capability to find anyone. They just look up all the contact lists provided by everyone. It will contain real names, even nicknames in case someone is harder to find. What's tough about this nonchalant normie behavior is how it ruins the privacy of others in a big way. It hurts you too. You can go into social media and think you will set up a different name on Instagram and you will be somewhat safe. Well, you of course have no memory that you gave them your phone number for two-factor verification. And that two-factor verification number, which is your single phone number, is on thousands of people's contact lists with your true name and even your address. You didn't know that there was a connection between phone numbers, contact lists, and identities. You hurt your privacy forever and the privacy of others, even more since there are likely thousands in your contact list. Number 10, you got yourself an Apple AirTag. If you get a point for this, then you're likely an iPhone user and likely a big Apple fan. You actually went for the mantra that privacy is iPhone. So you found out about this tech that will make you never lose your keys. And you're not concerned about the technology that powers AirTags. And likely that is valid since it does not concern you much. Because you were unaware that an AirTag identifies the locations of all iPhones near it. So very effective contact tracing is going on. Apple knows which iPhone is nearby and so groups can be identified. You likely didn't know that communications on AirTags and iPhones uses a new mesh network that doesn't even rely on the internet. And that this mesh network architecture is actually the basis for another level of surveillance communications that will allow you to be tracked even without an internet. 
In fact, your iPhone becomes an AirTag when it's off, so you can be tracked with the iPhone on or off, with or without internet. You don't really care that there is no escape. Someone is always watching because you think Apple doesn't sell your data. This doesn't bother you as much as Google. But apparently you also didn't know that big tech sells their data to three-letter agencies. This of course is standard normie understanding. So in summary, what's your score? If you've scored a 10 for the absolute confirmation of being a tech normie, then likely you would not have watched this video. I would presume that the people who would have watched this video would be in the middle score. If so, either you're not that big on tech or some of this tech stuff is beginning to bother you and you're sensing that it may have an effect on your life and your family. The goal is to have a score of zero, but then you need to have tools to actually be a privacy Joe or a privacy K. I talk about solutions all the time, so please subscribe and you'll pick up my recommendations in past and future videos. Thank you for watching.